So for our last section of this unit, we're going to talk about vectors. So let's review what vectors are first. So remember, a vector is a quantity that has both length and direction. So if you look at this vector here on the left, this is the vector hg. Remember, you name it with your initial point first, going to your terminal point with that little half arrow. Remember, we can also call this, you know, lowercase little x, for example, um, and name that vector x, right, with the little arrow on top. Remember, the component form is what we used a lot in transformations when we were talking about translations, and that's the format with these pointy brackets, x, comma, y, where x is the horizontal change and y is the vertical change, right? So then the component form of vector hg, we would look at basically your rise and your run, right, your slope. So the vertical and horizontal changes, so going from h to g, we went left, 1, 2, 3, so that's negative 3, and the vertical change, we went up, 1, 2, 3, 4, so the component form of hg is negative 3, 4. Sound familiar? Hopefully. Um, so again, this vector hg, oops, it's missing that little half arrow, um, in component form is negative 3, 4. You can also look at this vector, and it's also missing that little half arrow, um, with initial point m and n, and write that in component form by just looking at the differences. Oops. So we can look at the component form of mn, being basically the change in x, so from x2 minus x1, right, thinking back to slope, and then y2 minus y1. So the component form of n, mn would be 10 and negative 8, because to go from negative 8 to 2, you went right 10. To go from 1 to 7, we went down 8, all right? Magnitude is the length of our vector. So remember, we had two pieces to it. Direction is our component form, which is where it's going, and length is what we call the magnitude. And how do we calculate the length of a vector? So the notation is going to look like absolute value, but it's actually not the absolute value, so we want to be careful with that. So when you see the vector in those straight vertical brackets, this means we're looking for the magnitude. or the length of the vector. How are we going to find that? Well, we want to know how long it is, so what formula do you think we use when we talk about lengths? Distance formula. Okay, so if we take a look at example two, we're going to draw out this vector and then find the magnitude to the nearest tenth. And this magnitude um, and direction is going to help us notice how just giving you a preview, this creates a right triangle. It's going to connect us back to trig when we're looking at specific situations. And oops, I just went all over the place. Okay, so example two, we're going to draw this vector, and you can pick your initial point to be anywhere. And I always like to pick my initial point to be 0, 0, because it's nice and easy, right? So you can choose your own initial point, and this just means we're going to go left one, right? Left one, up five. So go left one, up one, two, three, four, five. So this is my vector. To find the magnitude, what we want to do is basically look at your distance formula. So since I picked my initial point to be 0, 0, there's my x1, y1. So from there, my terminal point is negative 1, 5, which is my x2, y2. You guys remember the distance formula? Distance equals the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Then we're going to go ahead and plug it in and simplify. So I'd like you to go ahead and round to the nearest tenth. So go ahead and finish that off for me, please. Let's go ahead and check your work. Hopefully you got square root 26, which is also approximately 5.1 rounded to the nearest tenth. So that's magnitude, okay? Direction, I said earlier, is related to component form, but it's not actually just the component form. So the direction itself is the angle a vector makes with a horizontal line. And this is where we're going to use our components and trig to find that specific direction. So if you take a look at example 3, we have our vector 1, 4. We're going to draw it and then find the direction 
to the nearest degree. And again, you pick your initial point. I always love zero, zero because it's nice and easy and it's usually centered, okay? Then we are going to go ahead and go right one up four. So there's the vector. And the question is, where is the direction? Well, remember the direction is basically that angle of elevation. So this is your horizontal line. So this is the direction that I'm looking for. So that's my x. How am I going to use that to find, or how am I going to use the components to find it? Well, remember that right triangle I pointed out earlier? Use your rise and your run to get that right triangle. So we have a run of 1, a rise of 4. I'm going to redraw this really quick. So here's my right triangle. I'm looking for x. I have 1. I have 4. What is the correct trig ratio? Well, hopefully you got tangent, right? This is opposite. This is adjacent, tangent x equals 4 over 1. Nice and simple, tangent x is 4. Remember to get rid of the tangent to move it to the other side, we are going to do the arctan or the inverse tangent function, right, to both sides. So we're left with x equals arctan or inverse tangent of 4 to the nearest degree, 76 degrees. All right, so those are the two big concepts for vectors. We're going to go ahead and finish off the back when we're in class. The big thing to make sure we are focusing on when you come back to class is example four, so we want to know how to do that because that's going to combine um, some vectors together. It's kind of interesting when you think about trajectories. Okay, thanks for listening.